continue to follow the situation at Piney Point. The contaminated water pouring out of the old phosphate plant there into Tampa Bay could cause a lot of problems for the environment. That's probably an understatement. Fox 13's Craig Patrick joining us now with a look at the threat here, Craig, and how this could affect fish, wildlife, and people. Well, it ultimately depends on what happens next, but where we are, we're looking at, of course, radioactive material and heavy metals and ammonia in the stacks. That would be the long, steep mounds that we see. That's what, not what's currently leaking. So hopefully we won't have releases of that. But separate from that, we're talking about a lot of contaminated water that's loaded with phosphorus, it's loaded with nitrogen. That's what's now pouring into the bay that could have uh, serious impacts on our environment. These are the core components, as you may know, of chemical fertilizer because this is actually the byproduct of making the fertilizer. This is a, a part of the phosphate mining industry's waste product here. This complex, like others in Florida, is where the fertilizer industry strip mine the land to get to the phosphate rock beneath. They seep it in an acidic solution to get out the phosphorus. They leave behind radioactive compounds called phosphogypsum that they store in these mounds. And they also leave behind wastewater loaded with nitrogen and phosphorus that they store in these ponds. And that's the part that's leaking here, which is why they're pumping the wastewater into the bay to try to prevent a full-on collapse. And this wastewater can damage our environment because it will feed dangerous organisms in the water. Organisms that are normally starved for this nutrient, such as phosphate, will start to grow in uh, rather rapidly. And as a result, there might be an algae bloom. That would deplete oxygen levels in the water and kill fish and other creatures that live in the bay. But it's not just the kind of algae that you may associate with a dingy freshwater aquarium. It also feeds blooms of toxic blue-green algae in fresh and brackish water, which is actually an infestation of cyanobacteria. Now, we've seen that for many years to our south in and around Lake Okeechobee because fertilizer runoff drains from the Orlando area south into Lake O. In this case, instead of the runoff from fertilizer that people put on their lawns and crops, we're getting the contaminated water used in making the fertilizer. And that will put us at greater risk of being exposed to this. The same kind of toxic green slime that has plagued the fresh and brackish waterways in South Florida for years. And beyond killing fish and grass and wildlife, it also emits a toxin known to cause liver damage in people who have prolonged exposure to it, as well as other toxins linked to other health problems linked to other problems like neurodegenerative diseases, but that would be prolonged exposure linked to neurodegenerative diseases, meaning there's not direct causation, just evidence at this point. And that's why uh, there is hope that assuming that there will be blooms, uh, we know the risk that they may be comparatively short-lived, but this is something we will take a much closer look at coming up at five o'clock in terms of other adverse health effects that this kind of pollution ultimately can have, not just on the marine food web and fish, but on people as well. Yeah, so this is essentially fertilizer runoff on steroids, right? Um, is, so is there anything, yes. is, there yes. any, is there anything, Craig, they could do to the water that they're pumping out at this point to um, reduce the risk that it could feed a toxic algae bloom? Well, that's partly due to nature. Bottom line, you need two things for this to feed the kind of cyanobacteria blooms that we've seen in other parts of the state. That would be one, the nutrients, which as you noted uh, on steroids, are being pumped into the water as we speak. Two, it's heat, sunlight, and particularly summer heat will ultimately cook it into the brew that we have seen. So ultimately, weather in the coming weeks can have something to do with it, as well as the movement of the pollution as well, which we'll key into at five o'clock. Yeah, a lot of rain would probably help, but this is not our rainy season quite yet. All right, thanks, Craig.